Hey there everyone, Hanya here, and welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 1, Onikakushi. Last episode... You know, I'm, I, I keep saying the last episode was a weird episode, but it, it, it's true, because every episode is weird from here on out, apparently. Um, we had another run-in with... I, I call them Void Eyes, whenever they do that thing, like get possessed or whatever the hell is going on. So, uh, yeah, we had another run-in with Void Eyes Rena, and, uh, apparently, oh, Yashiro-sama might have followed us home? I don't know. Whatever. We, we freaked out after getting home and smashed the shoe cupboard. Our parents are gonna be pissed. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. This this whole situation and everything is weird and strange and more than a little fucked up. Um, that being said, let's carry on, I guess. So yeah. No, oh, phone's ringing. The phone rang noisily downstairs. Generally, there were no calls from for me, so I never really answered the phone much. But since both, but since my parents weren't here, I had no choice. I squirmed off the bed and went downstairs. Hello, this is the Maybara residence. Keiichi, this is mom. I intuitively had a bad feeling about this. It was because I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy some things. So I took the initiative. What? I don't mind having instant noodles for dinner. There's still a lot of them. The other day we went out as a family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different kinds, act actually, but they refused since the individual packs were expensive. So instead I got a whole case of the mega-sized pork bone and ginger flavored ones I liked. Uh, that, that actually sounds pretty good. I'd, I'd, I'd eat it. But my parents don't like strong flavors and didn't touch any of them, so the cupboards were still full of them. <laughs> so you see, there really isn't a need for a need to go shopping, right? Keiichi, I'm not asking you to go shopping. Both mommy and daddy have to go to Tokyo right now because of work. Huh? Right now? This was really abrupt. No, we're already here. We left this afternoon. It's quite a distance to Tokyo from Hinamazawa. Gunning at full speed down the highway would still take six hours. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highway, they likely took the train. It would have, it would have taken longer. I'm thinking you might understand since you heard us speaking last night. But it has to do with Daddy's contract. Right now, things aren't going so smoothly. Now that she mentioned it, I did remember that they talked uh, all the time about how his job prospects weren't looking so good. Daddy is really sensitive about things like this, so if we leave things as they are, it will affect his work. Part of my father's particular, er, fra particular fragile artistic personality. His emotions changed as easily as the fall sky. You could also just say he couldn't take criticism. But something like that can be done over the phone. Keiichi, this is your father's job, so can you support him a bit, please? Anyway, it's just faster to talk about it in person. So there would be, so there wouldn't be any misunderstandings. As their son, there was nothing more I could say once they started talking about work. So we'll be back tomorrow night. Keiichi, will you be fine on your own? <clears throat> it's not like I'll die or anything. Keiichi, you shouldn't speak so lightly of dying. If there's something troubling you, just talk to us. I believe Mommy will be able to help you out. We'll be able to help out. Yesterday I did bring up if I died rather abruptly, so I suppose they were a little worried. 
But really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. But I didn't plan on dying. At least not while I still knew nothing. You know nothing, Jon Snow. That, I, I, that, that just... It, reading that just made me want to say that. Um... <laughs> I would never allow it. I won't die. I won't. I'll survive even if I have to gnaw my leg off. Yeah, see you then. Tomorrow morning, make sure to wake up. And eat your breakfast. And don't forget to take a bath and brush your teeth. Yeah, yeah, see you. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went off to Tokyo for business meetings. But Tokyo was far away. They normally did things by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance and it happened and and bleh. planned out in advance it never happened this suddenly. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange or rather unnatural. Anyway, I only needed to recognize the reality of the situation. That tonight I was the only one in the house. That when my parents came back from work, I'd be gone, missing, vanished. Looking back on the series of events of the previous five years involving Oyoshiro Sama's curse, it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late. I didn't think it was good that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It wasn't the same as broadcast it was the same as broadcasting to the enemy that my parents were gone and this was their chance. First, I ran to the living room, flicked on the lights, and turned the TV on to a re reassuring volume. Next was the study. I simply turned on the lights and some music. From th With this from the outside, it would look like my parents were here. Once again, I went through the house, checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the veran veran eh, veranda and the laundry still hanging out there, I went pale. That would have made it too obvious. I need to take it down. I snatched down the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Ah, the garage. They hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone to. They had gone up to Okinomiya Station. I think that's right. The garage was empty, wide open, and in plain sight. This is not good. This was not good. I panicked and rushed out to uh, rushed out the back to close the normally open garage door. It should be fine now. Ah, I need I needed to get the paper. Mom always got the paper since they left in the afternoon. The evening paper was still out there. My premonition was correct. I pulled out everything from the mailbox and dropped it in the entryway. With this, for sure this time, it should be fine. Come to think of it, leaving the cupboard busted like that was a little... From my little freakout was kind of bad. I'll just say I tripped and fell and the bat was hold I was holding smashed into it. Even so, just leaving it in its current state wasn't good. I should clean up a little before Mom and Mom got back and scolded me. I remembered that there was a broom and dustpan in the closet. As I was going to get them, the phone rang once again. Hello, this is the Maybara residence. Oh, is this Keiichi Kun? Is your mother around? Ah, ah, she isn't here at the moment. You idiot, Keiichi Maybara. Don't reveal that your parents are gone. You can follow up still. Calm down and take care of it. I, I think she'll be back soon. That wasn't a good response either. Now they might now they might say they'll call again or to tell her to call them when she gets back. Then that's fine. It wasn't anything important. Well then, sorry for the bother. The scenario I feared didn't play out, electing a sigh of relief. Probably because they could tell you were lying and knew that you were home alone. 
The call was fortunate in more ways than one. I'd have to deal with more telephone calls coming in from my parents tonight. I was somehow able to deal with the phone just phone call just now, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improv improvisation. I needed to make up a good story to explain that my parents were home but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They were making tempura and couldn't step away right now. That wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Was that going to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on my way back to my room when the phone rang once again. It was like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick up, but I knew I had to. They'd suspect my parents weren't here. I should have taken the phone off the hook under the pretense that I didn't realize that, I, that it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted the receiver. Hello? I stopped announcing that this was the Maybara residence. I had no reason to be kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. But unlike my uncouth voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. Hello, my apologies for calling so late. This is Uishi from the Okinomiya bookstore. Uishi-san? Is that you, Maybara-san? Good evening. Good to hear you are doing well. What? Wait just a moment, please. I grabbed the portable handset and rushed up to my room with it. It was the same no matter where I was since there was no one else home, but I wanted to be in a spot that I, that just felt a bit safer when speaking on the phone with Uishi-san. Sorry for the wait. How are things? Anything changed since then? Since then, when was that exactly? There was something about the brazen way he talked that rubbed me the wrong way. Last time I spoke with Uishi-san was two days ago. The day I st stayed home from school, I met with Uishi-san on the way back from the hospital and we headed into town for lunch and had a talk. Then after that, Rina and Mian came to check up on me. Whenever I spoke to Uishi-san, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. Today's phone call may be may well be found out by them as well. Hello? Can you hear me, Maybara-san? Huh? Ah, sorry. Um, what did you say? I asked if anything's changed since last time. There wasn't an answer, so I got a bit worried. Uh, um, not really. The words stopped in my throat. There's a ton of stuff that, that happened. There was a ton of stuff that happened. All of it baffling. What should I talk about? I don't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't answer now, I may never have another chance. This night when my parents weren't home, I had no guarantees I would make it through the night safely after all. Well, Uishi-san, it seems that someone is after me. Really? It could all just be a coincidence, but that day I missed school when I was sick, the two of them came to check up on me. Which two? Rena and Mion. They started asking about how I, how I had lunch with you. What next? They left me some mochi when they came to visit, but there was a needle inside. Fortunately, I somehow didn't swallow it. I wonder, could that have just been a threat? About the needle. Um, it was about, it was just one of those common sewing needles you see at the time you see all the time. There was a hole to thread string through. Not that, Maybara-san, the needle itself. That's evidence. Could be used as proof that they threatened you. Where is that needle? Th that's right, that's it! I dropped the receiver and rushed downstairs. When I tossed the mochi, I had overlooked uh, it out of terror, but that needle was a valuable piece of evidence. I had certainly thrown the mochi and needle at the wall together. If it was there, then it would be on the living room wall. My prudent mother had cleaned that living room wall, and there was not a trace of mochi left on it. 
Could it be that it dropped in the gap between the wall and the carpet? I frantically searched by running my palm along the carpet, but nothing turned up. I tried moving around the sofa and desks, pulling up the carpet, and then flapping it around. But I couldn't find the needle. Did my mom clean up everything without noticing it? It was just two days ago. I didn't know what day they collected the burnable trash, but it may still be in the trash bin in the kitchen. I rushed to the kitchen, opened up the lid of the pail, and poured out the contents. Even at a glance, I could tell that it would be incredibly difficult to find the needle in this pile of trash. You mean like a needle in a haystack? I was looking for a needle in a trash stack. I know, I'll try running my hand through it. It was a bit gross, but I was looking for a needle. If I felt a small prick, I'd still I'll be able to find it. It was a pretty tactless method, but I was but it was the quickest. I held my breath and started striking the pile of trash with my hand. Filth flew about, but there was nothing more disgusting than but there was there was nothing more disgusting than this, but it was not the time to be concerned about such details. I continued for a while, but nothing turned up. I wanted to search more thoroughly, but I was still on the phone. I shouldn't keep Uishi-san waiting for too long. Later, when Mom got back, I'd have to ask her if there was a needle. I hesitantly began scri scribbling on the notepad affixed to the refrigerator with a magnet. Was there a needle? I scrawled the words with a red pen. I then dashed back upstairs where I had been keeping Uishi-san waiting for far too long. Hello? How did it go? I couldn't find it. I was really overwhelmed back then, and I see. It would be great if you could find it. Keep it safe. That's right, the needle w it wasn't the only incident. I had to tell him about this morning with the hit and run. Uh, also, Uishi-san, that isn't all. Actually, this morning. That van was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at the time. Did you see the license plate? I can search for it from here. Damn. I just flipped out yelling at him back then, but I didn't look at the light, look at the plate. What failures on my part with the needle and the n plate number? I was so focused just per protecting myself that I let the, some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow, annoyed at how worthless I was. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know much more than than that it, it than, bleh, than that it was a white van. Nothing to fret about, Maybara son. Anyone would be shaken up after being hit. I guess all this really isn't a coincidence, is it? Wishi san started to hem and haw over on the other end. I can imagine him folding his arms. Also, Rena is acting strange. How so? Well, Rena said on the way home today, asking why I was so much like Satoshi-kun. Now I could say it with confidence that Rena knew what happened to Satoshi. She knew that there was more to it than him just simply disappearing. Rena knows. She knows something regarding what happened to Satoshi, the kid who was demoned away last year. What would that be exactly? Rina said I was the same as Satoshi. She said something to the effect of the way things are going, I'll end up with the same fate as Satoshi. Fate, you say. Exactly what kind of fate did she, did she say would befall you? Um, transferring out, she said. Transferring out? Rina and Sato said Satoshi transferred out. So given how things are going with me, I'll transfer out too. Oishi-san let out a stern sigh and then grumbled loudly. Mebara-san, that was probably some sort of threat. Or maybe some type of warning. I thought so too. At that point, I started to think. Would it be prudent to sum up everything that had happened up until now as the machinations of some human per perpetrator? Other than the theory of it being Rina and the others, I was left with Oyoshiro-sama's curse actually existing and the only other as the only other explanation. Of course, I couldn't tell that to Oishi-san. Except, Rina's strange behavior could be proof of other, 
proof of either scenarios. Whether it was Oyoshiro-sama's curse being real or everything being part of a conspiracy committed by all the villagers. Rina was involved. Rina had to know something. Rina was suspicious. What exactly was Rina? I couldn't help but think she was somehow involved with the prior string of mysterious deaths. I seem to recall that Uishi-san had admitted that he had dug into Rina's past a little. He was probably just downplaying it when he said a little. Meaning he actually dug pretty deep, most likely. I wanted to hear about Rina. I wanted to know what, had, what happened at her previous school. Among other things that were still known to me, still unknown to me. If Rena was somebody I should suspect, no, not that. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight I was alone in this huge house. Even though I said I couldn't count on them, I had lost the security I felt I had just by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There was no other residences close, close to the Maybara residence. No one would be able to hear anything no matter how loud I w it was. I had never felt as much resentment toward my father's artistic temperament and the fact that he had this house built in such a remote location as I did right now. That just, that, that, that scared me for a second. I'm like, oh. I, won I wondered if I would still be here by tomorrow morning. So I had to ask, right now, because I had no idea when the next chance would come. I'm Uishi-san, I have something I want to ask about. Please don't keep, keep anything from me. Sure, ask away. Even though he was so far away on the other end of the line, this was the most reliable he had ever felt. I wanted to ask about Rena, about what happened at her previous school. Actually, regarding Rena's, I noticed a sound that had been going on for a while now. Since I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to it at first, but I finally realized it was the doorbell. The time was 7 o'clock. It was past the time the postman would be making a delivery, and past any sensible time for a neighbor to be visiting. I considered just acting like nobody was home, but that, wasn't, that wouldn't be good. That would ruin all the work I put in making it look like my parents were home. I need to answer the door. Hello? Maybara-san. Ah, sorry. Someone seems to be at the door. I'm going to go see who it is. A guest? I see. My apologies. Should we end this phone call now? That would be a problem. Ah, no. I'll, I'll be back in a second. Do you mind if I just leave the phone on? It's fine. I don't mind. I dropped the handset on my bed and dashed down to the door. I needed to make up a good excuse to get them to leave. I had a hunch it was the lady who called right before Uishi-san did. In which case it would be one of the neighbors who's friends with my mom. I'll just say my mom isn't feeling well and went to bed early. That would be the easiest option. Except I'm betting it's not. And I'm betting it's one of your friends, and I'm betting it's probably Rena or Mion, one of the two, if not both of them again. It'd be hard for her to ask me to wake up, wake my mom up if she's not feeling well. The bell continued to ring at regular intervals. If someone didn't answer after you ring the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, wouldn't you? Without removing the chain, I opened the door slightly and peeked out at the visitor. A chill ran down my spine. I knew it. Somewhere deep inside, I had prepared for this moment. I tried to escape by imagining it was the easiest person to deal with, one of my mom's friends. Called it. Good evening. Er, Rena. 
There shouldn't be any reason for Rena to come over at this hour. The timing also made me feel uneasy. Because it was just as I was about to ask Oishi-san about Rena. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence. But those unsettling words from Mion several days ago echoed back to me. There's nothing this old man doesn't know. Are you home alone, Re Are you alone, Rena? Yeah. Seems that Mion wasn't with her, but that doesn't but that didn't change the situation at all. Why did you come here? Hey Keiichi, I'd like you to open the door so we can talk. Can I come inside, I wonder, I wonder? It was true that speaking through a chained door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate, but at my house, the chain has to be on at night. Don't worry about it. Then it can't be helped, I guess. Rena pouted rather sadly, but she kept smiling at least, and her effort to keep that smile was quite pitiful. Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. What I really feared, more than the possibility that hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain, was trusting Rena enough to remove the chain and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain wasn't unlatched, even if, it w even if it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by, by Rena. Since it didn't seem like I'd remove the chain from her silent urging, she appeared to give up, give up on trying to get into the entranceway. Um, have you eaten yet, Kei kun No, I haven't eaten. Since my mom wasn't there, dinner wouldn't be ready no matter how long I waited. I laid down when I got home, was woken up by the phone, and didn't have a chance to eat since I used up all that time talking. I was going to have a, have cup noodles in any case. I could just eat one whenever I wanted to. No, not yet. What about it? Hee hee hee, then good. Look here. I bought a brunch, bunch of dishes. Rena held out a stack of boxes wrapped in, clo wrapped in a cloth. Eh. If I could use your kitchen, I can heat th heat up the miso soup and other stuff. It's fine, you don't need to do that. But there's a lot there's a lot of tofu and vegetables in it. Does Keiichi Kun not like that type of stuff? I wonder, I wonder. There's no way I wouldn't like that. I love miso soup with lots of ingredients. White radish, carrots, burdock root, and potatoes. Dense and fibrous root vegetables. Yeah, that miso soup looks incredible. I also brought rice, so if you microwave it, you can eat it really quickly. Without a doubt, rice needs miso soup. Stuffing rice down your gullet, sipping miso soup in between ravenous bites. Oh yes, how wonderful it is to be born Japanese. I gotta admit, that sounds fantastic. And I love... I, I, I'm a fan of miso soup, too. So. And especially when you use miso soup as a base for, like, ramen. Miso ramen, man. That. That shit right there. That is good food. Especially spicy... Spicy pork... Spicy miso pork ramen. Or spicy mi anything miso ramen is awesome. Comment your favorite Japanese food down below. You know what? Let's 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 uh, get this get this ball rolling. Personally, it, uh, and also comment the 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 one Japanese food you'd really love to try that you haven't had yet. For me, it's takoyaki. I I I really like octopus and stuff like that. And to me, takoyaki just makes perfect sense. I mean, come on, it, it, it's it's a it's a octopus and cheese dumpling basically, and that 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 in and of itself sounds incredible. But I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent, so 
Carrying on. Also, I made some more pickles. I made I made sansai pickles this time. Before I had moved here to Hinamazawa, I scoffed at the mountain vegetables called called sansai. But I was captivated by their charm the first time I tried them. Such a deep yet light flavor. The vegetables from the supermarket were tasteless and bland compared to these. If you had to describe them, then they were the vegetables for the uh, uninitiated. To become an expert, such as myself, you first had to partake of sansai. It was commonly it was common knowledge around here that the Ryugu family's traditional pickles were wonderfully delicious. Ah, no matter what kind of pickles they were. They'd go so well with fluffy white rice. And we're going to end this episode here, so if you enjoyed it, please leave it a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more content in the future, and until next time everybody, have a good one. I'll see you later. Bye!